So I'm, uh, I'm one for three against Pittsburgh. I played high school football, lost against Shadyside Academy, invested in a company called Lockers that left here, moved to Seattle, and uh, failed miserably. And now I'm on the board of a company called Duolingo, world famous already, and trying my best to keep them here. So um, I'm a video game guy. The video game business has created kind of 75,000 jobs in, uh, in the US in the last 30 years. Uh, not very many in Pittsburgh, however. So I'm going to talk about people, place, and things. So people, in general, my day job now is to work with founders. Um, I'm on 10 or 11 boards. Kleiner Perkins invests in about 25 companies per year. Um, I had 225 uh, product review sessions with entrepreneurs last year. You should know if Pittsburgh is trying to be a haven uh, for entrepreneurs, how they think. They are not all that rational. Um, and um, they're very risk-taking, um, especially, especially the youngsters. Um, these are the people who do base jumping and uh, used to do snowboarding when it was illegal. Uh, they have evolving needs. Basically, when they start, they will eat nothing. They will live, tend to a house. Um, to try to get the product market fit. So they're not exactly like you and me. Um, so Pittsburgh place matters for them. They mostly want a peer group, a peer group that's all doing well, who they can slightly beat. It's very hard, just as with you know, our, uh, authors got to the left bank around Medici time, artists got to Florence, uh, entrepreneurs like to flock. Um, funders like to find people who will go the distance. Most entrepreneurs entrepreneur because they're unmanageable and they hate being bossed. Um, but it's so hard, many give up. This is Yuri Milner of DST, a former um, um, nuclear physicist when the Russian, uh, when the wall came down. Um, the f founders are people who you're uncomfortable have to have dinner with until they're so successful you hope to be able to invest in them. Uh, the next thing, they have to be gritty. This is what we all want of our, out of our children. When things suck, they keep going and they find a way. And um, um, they have some things they have to learn from old people like us. Um, the coin of the realm for any technology company is developers. Good news, Carnegie Mellon has as many graduates who can be great developers as any university uh, in the North. Um, what these people want is they want to brag to their college friends about how cool their job is. So they've got to work for a company people have heard of, or it's got to be in, a, in an industry that people have heard of. They've got to be in a city that they can brag about. You don't want to say, I went here and your sorority sisters and fraternity brothers laugh at you. And um, it doesn't need to be affordable, by the way. So if you're trying to get 20-somethings and you say, we're the most affordable city in, um, in the world, they don't care. They'll live five to a uh, two-bedroom apartment that they find on Craigslist. Um, the network is really important. This is the most network generation we've ever seen. If you have kids or friends under 30, you know that they don't build networks on the golf course. Uh, they, they build networks on their telephones. So um, in Pittsburgh, I put in this picture of Jeff Bezos because he was living in New York and he got to pick a place to go to. He picked Seattle because he thought Microsoft was going to lose all of its good engineers, enough for him, and it had no state tax. He's one of only three entrepreneurs I've ever met who picked their location based on state tax. One went to Texas, one went to Nevada and founded Zappos. Um, what they want to know is wherever I go, can I get money? Can I get the first 50,000? Can I get the next 250? Can I get the million? Can I get the five? Can I find a co-founder? And these days, it's designer and, uh, and programmer are the co-founders. Next, can I keep up? You know, if I go to a sleepy place, will it make me sleepy? Founders don't want to be sleepy. Um, next, is there a platform for, a, uh, for the audience they need? And if they work, can they hire 200 people? Hey, I got a screen in front of me. Can they hire 200 people in the next five years? And, um, and if, it's, if you can't get 200 people out of a local university like Carnegie Mellon, can I get people to relocate? I'm going to say, uproot yourself, come to a really cool company, and I'm in. 
And Pittsburgh, if you want these people, you got to give them that first line. Okay, places in my um, in in my history in the gamers business, I've opened offices in all these places, and I've closed offices in half of them. Um, the on the right, the places we closed office are successful for many, but not for me. When we closed offices, we only did it for two reasons. One, we couldn't find a good enough leader. Um, the most important thing in a multi-location uh, company is that there is a vision and a leader in each place. So uh, the most likely um, um, starting out for Pittsburgh is to get more companies like Google to put 500 great people here. And to do that, you need one great stand-up person everybody salutes to. Um, and the second thing you need is you need a stream of incoming 20-somethings. We got out of Las Vegas because they, there are no CS graduates in Las Vegas. Um, every other place we got out because we couldn't get a good enough leader. So just to give you a quick overview, I actually went through, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the number one city for um, video game jobs in the country is Los Angeles. Didn't used to be the case. It all happened in about the last five years, um, mostly because USC started graduating uh, good enough engineers. It went from a, a not top 25 CS school to kind of a top 12 and really focused on video games. It's unaffordable. It's a pain in the ass to get around, um, and it doesn't matter. It's also got great sports. It's got the promise of the beach, which programmers don't go to, and it's got an annual convention called the E3 Expo. If you want people to, sh if you want 20 something to show up, make sure you have one great global event per year. Uh, San Francisco is actually second here. It's got Stanford, it's got Cal. It's equally unaffordable, um, but it's got the Game Developers Conference. It's got pretty good mass transit. It's got pretty good venture. Almost all these places have some venture, but venture capitalists will fly. Uh, Vancouver is actually the third most in, um, in North America, and this is an act of will and one founder. Uh, it turned out the one founder got uh, kind of curated by the mayor at the time. It was on a first-name basis, and uh, out of this one company, I got involved with them when they had 30 people. We grew, th we grew this to 2,000. One leader, mayoral support, and uh, they got a little bit of incentives, and the incentives were basically that uh, programmers um, got a little tax deduction, which you don't care about if you don't make profits. And then they started a graduate school program, but over 20 years. Uh, Montreal, which has basically no CS, has cool nightlife, terrible weather, 5,000 jobs since 1997, all in an act of willpower. What Montreal said is, uh, we will give you cash back for half the price of every programmer you hire. So the effective rate in Montreal of hiring a CS grad who in San Francisco, a Stanford grad, is like $125,000 a year with a BS. In Montreal, the net cost of the company is about thirty-five grand. They really have nothing else going for them there except the hockey team that finally made the playoffs. Um, London had the big advantage that it was one of the two places in the world where the video game business started with the Sinclair Spectrum uh, back in the 70s. It's been pretty mediocre. The government has tried to create incentives, tried to create enterprise parks. It hasn't exactly worked. Um, luckily, they have industrious, um, industrious kids, most of whom went to Oxford or Cambridge now, it turns out. Um, Austin has also been an act of willpower. South by Southwest has kept this going, but its, it's um, job creation in uh, video games has been flat for a decade. Uh, Boston, this is where consumer um, companies go to die. I don't know why. There's some reason. Maybe all those people ought to come to Pittsburgh and learn how to work for a living. For some reason, everybody who gets something going in Boston gets to some level of success, can afford Red Sox tickets, and stops working. Uh, maybe this will be different in, uh, in biotech. I hope so. We're involved in a company called Foundation. Orlando is another place to learn from. No university there, no reason to live there. It's a place to go for three days to go to Universal Studios and Disney. Uh, Jeb Bush created a, a master's program there, and we had one person from Miami who wanted to live there because it was cheap. 
and uh, we grew from zero to 1,000 people between about 94 and 2002. So cities can do willpower. Stockholm, shout out to you, Scandinavian. Stockholm is the place that unicorn companies get created. No real CS schools, um, terrible weather, 10 months a year, but happy people and brilliant entrepreneurs. It's kind of the, most, the city with the most grit in the world for video gaming. So Pittsburgh, my old guy wisdom for free, what you need is one company that everybody can look up to. If you see a seed of one company, feed it, fertilize it, put that political crap on it. Uh, lifestyle matters. This has got to be a cool place to be. A conference can do that. Um, you need founders who can scale. The Carnegie Mellon as a learning institution is great for lifelong learning. You need a university pipeline. Each company has got to believe they can hire five or ten great people a year. Um, don't put city, don't charge city taxes on stock options or at least give like a five-year um, hiatus. And if you want to get uh, companies like Amazon and Facebook and Twitter to put 500 people here, treat them like a sports team and um, uh, lean into it. What doesn't matter is housing affordability. What doesn't matter is mass transit. What doesn't matter is weather. And state tax rate doesn't matter. So don't waste your resources on stuff that doesn't matter. So things, this is about um, uh, the mayor's office decides to actually take some, some uh, creative approach here. Here are a couple of random thoughts. I've been involved with all these uh, entrepreneurial programs. Entrepreneurs are taught but they're mostly taught by experience. So one thing that's great to do is a reverberating applause. <laughs> Entrepreneurs are made, not born. Um, it turned out the first $25 or $50,000 is the most important thing. Next is entrepreneurs keep doing it, and you should expect anybody who says, I want to be an entrepreneur, just tell them, be prepared to fail four or five times. It's not like throwing a conference where if you fail once, it never happens again. So entrepreneurship, go on forever. Now, the, oop, the second idea is in video game, entrepreneurship really works. Um, Carnegie Mellon has the best graduate video game program in the world. I'm hitting red. Oh, there it goes. Um, Carnegie Mellon has the best in the world. Uh, the kids ship five things in their first semester. Um, and so Pittsburgh, keep more people here than Jesse Shell in video games. Um, a couple things that play into Pittsburgh. One is 20% of important startup companies the last five years were co-founded with a designer. Airbnb is one, for example. Uh, Carnegie Mellon is the university in the country that best combines uh, design and also tech. So there ought to be something for here. And you, you know, having cool architecture also matters. Uh, the next trend is data science, big data, analytics. It used to be just Google. Look at all these companies that are all going to be worth more than a billion dollars sooner or later in all the key areas. Again, Carnegie Mellon um, is top five here. So uh, if somebody says data science and Pittsburgh in the same sentence, play, pay attention. So Pittsburgh, here's what you've got. Um, no video game studio that I started or closed. Um, a top five university, which is pretty outstanding. It's the university in the world with the most, the highest percent female grads. And guess uh, what people want for coworkers in tech companies? Females. In San Francisco, I get recent college grads. I place a lot of them. I can place hardworking college grad women with English majors in a week. Any boy who doesn't have a CS degree takes 90 days and usually has to commute for an hour. So don't let your children grow up to be boys who don't program. Uh, robotics and data science here, <laughs> art and design, affordability and small town feel is great. One of these companies or one like it has got to be your kingpin. Um, I've got a bunch of experience in how to innovate. The basic idea of Pittsburgh mayor's office is start really small, fail fast, and, and get small wins. The Medici effect is the idea of diversity on a team. Uh, creativity happens at interdisciplinary, you know, like politics and law, two totally different um, fields. Some thought provokers, Pittsburgh should know what's going on with the students, how they're thinking about entrepreneurs. Benchmark Stanford, talk to 100 Stanford undergrads, ask where do you get funding?
How many of your friends are starting companies? What are you going to do and compare? My sense is CMU right now is at about at a tenth. There's no meme of entrepreneurship at CMU yet. Um, Chicago does an Ideas Fest. It's kind of like a TED dedicated to Chicago. Lasts a whole week. It's cool. And, um, you know, you got uh, Franco Harris last night. You got him in the airport. You know, what's the crazy ass idea that everybody's going to talk about? Do you believe that Pittsburgh did this? Uh, you know, Google blimps with free Wi-Fi for anybody. And reinvent your movie poster. This will not get people under 30 to come to Pittsburgh. Um, things like the first smart city, how about those Steelers, we got a mayor who could. You can get robotic husbands here who will take out the garbage and uh, give you compliments. Self-driving taxis, so do something really cool. And um, thanks, I'm, uh, I answer email. That was great, that was great. Oh, thanks. Um, so what I love about that is you just took a whole bunch of sort of the urbanist Bible, you know, what doesn't matter. We're affordable, we have mass transit, and you basically said, guys, get a grip. Um, so if you had the president of Carnegie Mellon, you pit here, get all the foundations, money's not really an option. Um, you've got the political leadership, um, it sounds like what you're saying is you, you've really got to almost get some focus grouping going on about who you're trying to attract there or who you're trying to keep. And, and, you know, the Ideas Festival, I mean, this is not the kind of thing that, um, I mean, with the exception of today, actually, um, that many mayors would think of doing, actually, or even of celebrate. I mean, you're really going it, against the it, grain. It, it sucks to be old. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's, um, so here, kind of again in the arts, it's uh, all these, all these uh, urban areas that have big successes now have all started small. Even New York 10 years ago, there were no digital companies in right. New York. And then there's a couple little companies, then there's Etsy, then there's Foursquare, and each one has the bragging rights, and then somebody does better. And uh, now BuzzFeed's the king of New York, and stuff's going to be bigger. There still isn't a company in New York as important as the top 10 coming out of Silicon Valley, but it's probably going to happen. So this constant iteration. And, um, and then, you know, kids want to go in a place that's cool. And if they're Carnegie Mellon, they should all stay here. But um, just as STEM um, professors try to find the high school kids and make sure they don't bail on STEM, um, get them the entrepreneurship bug, and Carnegie Mellon and other universities need to find ways that kids can compete for the first 25 grand. Great. And make kids, make kids learn from the real world, not from teachers. Teachers should be consultants and, and uh, students should learn from the real world. Fantastic. That was great. Thanks. Thanks.